Lovable has just released a brand new update which now allows you to use MCPs inside of Lovable. And of course, we're gonna get into it. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know. I'm gonna show you how to set them up, how they work, and what everything can do. First, before we dive into this, we need to understand what an MCP is. So if you're new to this world, an MCP stands for a Model Context Protocol. It's basically a very simple way that allows your AI agent or LLMs in general to be able to read and write using different applications. Very similar to how APIs work, but now you can naturally tell your LLM what you want it to do and then connect your LLM to external tools so it can either read context from some outside source or it can even modify something else on the back end and this will make a little bit more sense as we dig into this so without further ado let's get into how the lovable mcps work so obviously the first thing is going to be how do you access the new mcps so the first thing you need to do is of course log into your lovable account and you're going to notice there is a brand new beautiful dashboard uh, with this nice left side menu so what you want to do is go to your lovable account and you're going to click on settings from here we can go down to this bottom section that says integrations Clicking on integrations will allow you to access all of the available MCP servers. Now, these are partnered MCP servers that Lovable is directly partnered with, so you can trust these connections. Alternatively, you can also add your own MCP by clicking on new MCP server and click on add. You can add a server name and then give a server URL. And if you have a bearer auth token, like an API, then you can add that API token right here. There are a whole lot of other MCPs that you can use. So stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna give you an entire list of about 50 plus MCPs that you can access to power up your AI coding agent inside of Lovable. With these partnered MCP servers, all you have to do is click on connect. It will ask you to log into your account and you're good to go and you're connected. Now what we're gonna do is go over what each MCP tool does, what it has access to, and how you can best use those tools to your advantage. Of course, the first tool that we're gonna go over is the Notion MCP tool. Some practical use cases, you can use it to import content from your Notion docs into your app. You can use Notion as a content source for building features or reference your Notion documentation while building. So now you can have your PRD document inside of Notion and then while you're building with Lovable, you can just tell Lovable to go look at that PRD and make sure that it's building everything that it's supposed to be building in the correct order, which is insanely helpful when it comes to building a more complex project. So as a quick example, I have this MCP directory PRD inside of my Notion here, and I've simply went to Gemini and just told it that I wanna make an MCP directory, and I've just pasted it literally directly into Notion. So you can tell Lovable something like this. Use the Notion MCP tool to find my page named MCP directory PRD and reference this page to ensure our app is correctly set up according to the PRD doc. So all we're doing is we're telling Lovable what MCP tool to use and what to do when using this MCP. So now we can see that it's gonna go ahead and ask us if it wants to use the MCP. We're gonna say allow. What you can do is instead of having it ask each time, you can literally just click on always allow click on allow and it will do everything else for you. That's if you wanna have Lovable pretty much just run everything for you. But uh, if you wanna watch what it's doing and kind of make sure it's doing everything correctly, I would probably leave that as ask each time for right now. So if we look at what Lovable found right here, it says that these things need fixing, open graph tags and the submit button. So if we double check that, we can look at this Notion PRD here. The PRD includes an add submit button. And for SEO basic tags, we have this open graph tags here which it found that we were missing. So it went ahead and now added them. So now our app matches the PRD 100%. The next MCP we're gonna get into is the N8N MCP. And to be fair, when I first saw that they released this, I was wondering why, what would be the actual use case of this? Because most of the time you can just use an edge function that will do everything that N8N will do. But I'll show you why this can be a little bit more powerful, depending on your skill level. So a couple quick practical use cases, you can create a workflow that sends email notifications when somebody creates a new account. You could send data to third party apps like HubSpot, Go High Level or Salesforce, or you can use an external AI image generation tool to generate images, automatically back up data to Google Drive or custom date or account inactivity reminders. These are going to be the two top workflows I would suggest everybody should have inside of their app, whether you're doing this with an edge function or you're doing this with N8N with the MCP, it doesn't matter. These are the two things that you should always be doing to increase your customer retention overall. So this is the example we're gonna go over right here, which is gonna be creating a workflow that sends an email notification when somebody creates a new account. So what that looks like in practice is this right here. So this is your lovable app right here, right? And inside of your app, anytime somebody makes a new account and they sign up, this is going to be the trigger, which is then going to go to N8N via MCP and then start your workflow. 
And inside of the NNN workflow, we have the MCP server trigger, which can then send the welcome email and it can add the new user into Airtable. Now, this of course is just a very simple example of what you can do. You can build far more complex workflows, but this is just a very quick and easy one that everybody should have set up. Now, the question still remains, why not just make this into an edge function? I think that for a lot of people that are getting into this or people that want to build very nimble and malleable workflows, NNN is a great way to do that because you can easily visually see what you're doing and how different things connect to each other. But also if you need to change something or change variables, it's very easy to just jump into NNN, change your variables or change out a few nodes to make something do whatever you want it to do, and then just come back to Lovable and run it again, right? It's very simple. I do think for the long term, if you are building production code, you should first demo your workflows inside of NADN. And then once they're good to go, right, this is good, then go and tell Lovable to build these workflows into an edge function that has retries and fallbacks uh, built into them. So it's a little bit more stable. So that's my suggestion, but you could totally just run these off of an NNN workflow as well. And a few other available MCPs are gonna be the Miro MCP, which is really cool because I use Miro a lot. And basically what you can do with this is just build out your boards or your app interfaces or your user flow diagrams inside of Miro and then tell Lovable to go look at your Miro board and say, hey, go look at the user flow or look at the login screen or the confirmation screen. And Lovable can then take these screens, as we can see right here in this example, take these screens and rebuild them perfectly for your app, which is really nice. Same thing for user flows. Uh, you can just build your user flows inside of Miro, tell Lovable to go look at those user flows, implement it into the application that you are actively working on, and Lovable can do that. You can use Lovable to go and look at your Miro board wireframes, journey maps, and feature prioritizations convert wireframes from Miro into working components in your app and understand user flow context for your app and implement it exactly. So what does the MCP actually do? It allows Lovable to search Miro boards and access frames, sticky notes, shapes, and text content, as well as board structures to extract the exact design specifications and visual layouts to directly implement them into your app. Next, we're gonna go over the linear MCP tools. A few practical use cases for linear is gonna to be to read bugs, features, technical debt, and linear that has been tracked by the development team to understand what problems users are facing and pull actual error descriptions from bug reports and prioritize which features to build first based on their issue and priority cycle. So what does the MCP do for linear? It allows Lovable to read issues, issue statuses, projects, cycles, priorities, comments and descriptions, project roadmaps and milestones, query issues by status, labels, or assignee. The linear MCP tool is more of a read tool. So it's, so it's gonna be able to read inside of your linear account to be able to pull more context to figure out what to work on inside of your Lovable project, which is great because as we all know in the AI space, context is everything. The more context we can give to our LLMs, the more they will understand what it is that we are actually trying to do. And finally, we have the Atlassian Jira plus Confluence MCP tool. Now, this is going to be for more enterprise teams. So the practical use cases of this is so an enterprise team can document all their technical specifications in Confluence and tracks work in Jira. When building a new API integration, Lovable can read the API documentation from their Confluence pages, complete with authentication, specs, endpoint details, and examples, and simultaneously check related Jira tickets to understand edge cases and requirements that were discussed during planning. So what does the MCP actually do? It allows Lovable to read Jira issues, epics, stories, and project data, including status priorities and comments, as well as access confluence pages, documentation, and knowledge bases content to directly implement requirements, specifications, and technical details into your app. There's a lot going on there, but if we want to summarize it up, we're simply doing the same thing we did with the linear integration, which is allowing Lovable to now read inside of your Atlassian, Jira, and Confluence accounts so it can get more context, which context is king in this case for AI coding. So overall, some very powerful integrations that Lovable has released. And I know that people are gonna be asking because I asked this question as well to the developers. I asked why are there not more MCP servers available? The reason for this is because of security. MCP servers have associated risks with connecting with them because you are essentially allowing an LLM to directly connect with your projects. So you always wanna make sure that MCP servers that you are actively using 
are secure and they are safe and they work reliably. These MCP servers that are readily available right now are partnered with Lovable and they are safe and ready to be worked with. Now, as I mentioned, there are a ton of other MCP servers that you can connect with your Lovable agent. So down below in the description, there will be a link where you can access a ton of other MCP servers that I have dug up so that you can try those out. Now that is gonna be it for me. If you have any questions on MCPs or how to use these, be sure to drop a comment down below and I'm happy to help you guys out. And I will see you legends in the next video.